My name is Kyung Hyun Do from Asan Medical Center. Today, my topic is emerging pulmonary viral infection focused on clinical and imaging characteristics. Respiratory viral infection is the most common cause of respiratory infection. The symptom of viral infection, as you know, common cold, rhinitis, pharyngitis, and can often occur as pneumonia. There are risk factors for developing viral pneumonia progressed from upper respiratory infection. Recently, from 2000, several viral organisms are raised in our concern. Human Boca virus, human metanumovirus, SARS and MERS coronaviruses and influenza H1N1 are the new members of viruses which could affect pulmonary infection. However, Identify of the underlying viral pathogen may not always be easy. This case was confirmed HMPV pneumonia, but initially our differential diagnosis is pulmonary tuberculosis. This is another case of HMPV pneumonia, but the findings are more severe. This is also another HMPV pneumonia just shown centrilobular nodules. Although diverse severity, we can identify typical patterns, centrilobular ground red surface nodules, some are same distribution of pulmonary tuberculosis, but some are different characteristics. So, is it a unique pattern of HMPV pneumonia? Unfortunately, not. These are images from article. Ill-defined centrilobular ground red surface are shown in RSV para-influenza virus and influenza A virus, representing airway inflammation. Airway filling may noted as groundless opacity or consolidation in influenza A virus and adenovirus. These findings are somewhat disappointing because of diverse and overlapping imaging findings between viruses and even other pathogens. This is a viral family map. There are a number of indicators for identifying viral pathogens on the basis of imaging patterns, which are associated with the pathogenesis of viral infections. Viruses in the same viral family share a similar pathogenesis of pneumonia, and the imaging patterns have distinguishable characteristics. Although not all cases manifest with typical patterns, most typical imaging patterns of viral pneumonia can be classified according to viral families. So the purpose of this lecture focused on the radiographic and CT patterns of viral pneumonia caused by different pathogens, including new pathogens. Clinical characteristics that could affect imaging, such as patient age and immune status, seasonal variation, and community outbreaks and pathogenesis are also discussed. First, clinical characteristics are age and immune status. Those are the common pathogens which can cause viral pneumonia in pediatric and adults. Based on the immunity of the patient, pathogens are differed. Those viruses are commonly affected immune-compromised host. It may be difficult to distinguish the pathogens of pneumonia, and especially most of the imaging findings of viral infection is similar to those of bacterial infection. Also, co-infection can occur. However, some characteristics of viral pneumonia could be noted as five categories, and recognition of those patterns will help to distinguish some typical cases. Specific imaging findings we presented with the cases in this session. So let's move to the case. Let's start adenoviride, bronchiola and alveolar damage result from necrotizing bronchitis and hemorrhage consolidation. So typical imaging findings of 
adenoviralmonia, including consolidation and granulous opacity. This is a case of adenovirus pneumonia in 22-year-old men with immune-competent host. Multifocal consolidations and groundless opacity along bronchovascular bundle is noted. Next one is herpes viride. Herpes viride is double-strand DNA virus. Herpes viride has three subfamilies, depends on tissue tropism, pathogenicity, and behavior. As a cytopathic effect of common pathogenesis of this family, immune compromised hosts are vulnerable in these viral families. Cytopathic effect with diffuse alveolar damage phenomenon show diffuse groundless opacity on CT scans. This is a case of herpes simplex virus pneumonia. Chest radiograph shows diffuse lobular subsegmental or sub Segmental groundless opacity and consolidation. On CT scan, centrilobular nodules with the trim bud pattern is sh shown diffusely. Herpes viride also include viral varicella joster pneumonia. Varicella joster virus spread hematogeneously. CT scan shows multifocal small nodules with the surrounding halo. This is a 54-year-old man presenting with fever and cough. He underwent liver uh, transplantation three years ago. Varicella joster pneumonia is presenting as multifocal 1 to 10 mm well or ill-defined small nodules with surrounding halo or groundless opacities. And this pneumonia will occur three days or three weeks after history of contact. Two or three days after developing skin eruption, pneumonia can occur especially in immune-compromised host. Another important virus in immune-compromised host is cytomegalovirus. CMV shows diffuse groundless opacity with nodules on CT scan. The differential diagnosis including pneumocystis girovaci pneumonia or pulmonary edema ethta. This is a 28-year-old male underlying CML, presenting with shortness of breath and dyspnea. Diffuse groundless opacity is shown in CT scan. CMV pneumonia is life-threatening pulmonary infection in immune-compromised host, especially in AIDS patient. The cytopathic effect of CMV causes severe pneumonia with diffuse alveolar damage. Epstein-Barr virus is another herpes viride family, although rarely experienced, but it can be a pathogen of pneumonia with interstellar pattern. This is a case from article. EB virus pneumonia shows diffuse intercell infiltrates and groundless opacity. So, do you agree with me that viruses in the same viral family share a similar pathogenesis of pneumonia and the imaging patterns have distinguishable characteristics? I might be suggested that not all cases manifest with typical patterns most typical patterns of viral pneumonia would be classified according to viral families. Next part, I will introduce several severe emerging viral pathogens with their representative imaging and clinical findings. Human Boca virus is first isolated in 2005 from nasal pharyngeal aspirate. The main CT findings were bilateral consolidation and or groundless opacities. Centrilobular nodules were found less frequently. The pattern of CT findings were not significantly different between immune-compromised and immune-competent uh, hosts. This is a 63-year-old patient with underlying CNS lymphoma. CT scan shows bilateral groundless opacity and peribronchial consolidations without pleural effusion. The disease extent was larger in immune-compromised patients than immune-competent patients, but the differences were not statically significant. Next family is Parabixoviride and human parainfluenza virus, measles, RSV, and HMPV are included in this family. 
HMPV parainfluenza viruses and RSV are in the same viral family and they present a similar pathogenesis with peribronchial infiltration and the image findings are also similar. The chest radiograph shows peribronchial uh, infiltration with multiple nodular opacities. Axial CT scan shows also multifocal ill-defined peribronchial nodules. It also shown as patchy consolidation. HMPV firstly identified in 2001 and structurally similar to RSV. It is prone to progress to pneumonia in immune-compromised hosts, especially hematopoietic stem cell transplantation. This was also confirmed as HMPV pneumonia, and CT shows segmental distributed ill-defined centrioblar nodules resembles as a flower named as baby breed in this figure. We analyzed the CT findings for 251 patients with HMPV pneumonia. The most common CT findings are bilateral centrioblar nodules with groundless opacity. Cavitation and pleural effusion is less common. Respiratory sensitive virus is the same viral family of parainfluenza virus and HMPV, and the image findings are similar. They also presenting as multiple peribronchial nodules and ill-defined centrioblar nodules. But outbreak period is winter, so much different from others. Severe fever with thrombocytopenia syndrome is emerging infection, isolated virus in 2009. SFTS virus transmitted by ticks. The pathogenesis of SFTS virus is similar with Tantavirus, and the typical manifestation is probably edema. Also mixed with viride is single-strand RNA viruses. It has multiple subfamilies affect various species. Among the influenza virus, H1N1 is type A, and this presenting as ill-defined patchy consolidations along the bronchovascular bundles, and it is very difficult to distinguish from bacterial pneumonia. It is related to the outbreaks during winter season. It is related after one or two days of incubation period, symptoms developed and fatal influenza pneumonia can be caused by diffuse alveolar damage. Severe intercell inflammatory cell infiltration, neuramidase inhibitors or oseltamivir, so-called Tamiflu, is the available treatment option. These patients are both influenza B pneumonia, Patchy groundless opacity and consolidation are noted, sometimes show small amount of bilateral pleural effusion. Next one is coronaviride, including SARS and MERS coronavirus. SARS is a zoonotic disease identified in China 2002. Lacoon dogs are the animal hosts. We don't have any cases confirmed as SARS in South Korea. But the CT findings reported multifocal patchy groundless opacities in both lungs. Additionally, SARS coronavirus 2, which is a common problem today. This is a case of pneumonia due to MERS coronavirus in 27 year old man who presented with a cough and sputum. Initial chest radiograph shows increased areas of ill defined nodular opacity in both lower lungs especially in the left retrocardiac area. CT scan shows multifocal patchy and nodular consolidations with groundless opacity in both lower lobes. There was a lot of consolidations in MERS coronavirus pneumonia as well, but pleural effusion could rarely be seen, and patterns like boob or organizing pneumonia were mainly seen. These are cases MERS coronavirus pneumonia from various genres. There are parts that shows higher extensive patchy opacities and groundless opacities. 
there was a case of pace with dense consolidation on its dependent area and plural effusion. Severe acute respiratory syndrome, so-called SARS coronavirus, is first popular in 2002 to 2003. Diffuse alveolar damage is caused during acute phase, so you can see quite quietly nodular patchy opacities. It is said that involving the ACE system is the characteristics of SARS coronaviruses. The new SARS CoV-2 virus in COVID-19 is also known to be related to the ACE system. Distribution mainly appears as multiple car patch consolidations in peripheral portion of and relatively more groundless opacities is seen in beginning and toward the rest half patterns progressed during consolidation. Learning the clinical outcomes of SARS coronavirus might be helpful to expect the progression of COVID-19 pneumonia, so I've collected some pictures from the journal. This patient is a SARS patient and 45-year-old woman. When we had CT follow-up on 10, 17, uh, 20s and 31, 30, uh, 30s, we found the diffuse dense consolidations. Groundless opacity were all seen in entire lung at first, but the extent to which they show gradually decreased. Since SARS has been around for a long time, its survivors, according to a research paper, upon the following of three months, six months, and 84 months. Groundless opacity improved since the beginning, but even after 84 months, there was still linear interstellar thickening, which can be considered as fibrosis. Next family include rhinovirus. Rhinovirus infection is a major cause of viral pneumonia. It presented in all four seasons, and half of the patients suffered combined bacterial infection. This virus is the cause of highest mortality in patients admitted to ICU, followed by influenza and coronavirus. This virus commonly presenting as ill-defined nodular groundless opacities with intercell thickening and pro effusion is not common. So can you be recognize the representative EBG findings of viral pneumonia now? Let's briefly remind some imaging characteristics of viral pneumonia. These five illustrations are the typical CT findings of viral pneumonia. The first one is varicella virus. This is a CMV, and these centrilobular nodules and groundless opacities are the main findings of HMPV, parainfluenza, and RSV. This case with diffuse consolidation was influenza virus, pneumonia, and the last one was rhinovirus. I think CT images are helpful to distinguish of, uh, for uh, diagnosis of pathogens, but not all cases are distinguishable in clinical setting. Bacterial pneumonia and or pulmonary edema sometimes can combine, so hopefully I suggest that those imaging findings as complementary characteristics and we should consider clinical findings as well. At the beginning of this lecture, I suggested that CT findings of viral pneumonia is diverse but could be identified a specific pattern according with viral families. Although a definite diagnosis cannot be achieved on the basis of imaging features alone, the cognition of a viral pneumonia pattern may aid in differentiating viral pathogens. And keep in mind that the CT findings of pneumonia reflects host pathogen interaction. We have published those results in a number of papers. And 
For this case of COVID-19, Professor Song Woo Park of Asam Medical Center in Seoul gathered many resources from several journals. I believe reviewing these resources will be helpful in your clinical area. Thank you for your attention. During the lectures, we've got some questions from colleagues. Um, I want to share two questions with you. The first one is, do you think 2.5 mm thickness per CT slice is sufficient? Of course, it is sufficient for 2.5 mm for evaluation of COVID-19 pneumonia on CT scan. And detailed CT protocol and findings are uh, suggested in our guideline, like the I will be presented. The second question is, is there any recommendation for COVID-19 patient image screening, which is preferred between chest X-ray and CT scan? I want to introduce the guidelines from KSR, KSTR, for the use of diagnostic imaging for COVID-19. The Korean Society of Radiology with Korean Society of Thoracic Radiology make a guideline for the use of diagnostic imaging for COVID-19. And the answer of your first, uh, second one is the role of image studies, chest radiograph, chest CT as a screening test for COVID-19. Screening with chest radiographs or chest CT is not recommended for screening clinic for epidemiological or other unspecific reasons for asymptomatic individuals. And chest x may be considered in patients with respiratory symptoms visiting COVID-19 screening clinics. Also, chest X-rays are recommended for patients with fever or respiratory symptoms visiting outpatient safety clinics. Chest CT can be done after weighing individual risks and benefits in these circumstances. When pneumonia is suspected clinically, although pneumonia is not definitely on chest X-ray, and when there is a highly clinical suspicion for COVID-19, but with negative RT-PCR result. And for the critically ill patient or with other disease who are in need of emergent operation, or procedures, we cannot wait for RT-PCR result. So the answer included all this recommendation. Also, I will introduce shortly for the contents of guideline. In the guideline, the useful information of chest CT findings and Consideration of chest CT examination is also included. Additionally, we can share Q&A for radiologists on COVID-19 in this guideline. You can share this guideline from KSR or KSTR web pages. Thank you for your attention. I hope Today's lecture is useful for your clinical practice and useful for your patient.